to Welcome to Reality Unplugged, the podcast where we dive deep into the mysteries that shape our existence. And I'm your host, Amit, and today, we're exploring a mind-bending topic, the possibility that we are living in a simulation. Is our reality just an illusion? Are we characters in a vast, complex game? Joining me are two brilliant minds, David and Alice. Together, we'll challenge conventional thinking, explore cutting-edge theories, and debate the evidence that suggests our universe might be more digital than we ever imagined. So, plug in, open your mind, and let's question the fabric of our reality. Ever get this weird feeling like, what if we really are living in the Matrix? Okay, maybe not the whole leather trench coat thing. But the idea that our brains are basically like, constructing our reality. It turns out it's not as crazy as it sounds. Right. You sent us some fascinating stuff about this. And let me tell you, yeah. we are going deep down the rabbit hole today. It's such a great topic to dive into. Because what's so cool is, neuroscience is finally starting to catch up to these mind-blowing ideas. We're talking about actual research yeah. into how our brains create our experience of the world around us. So it's not just philosophers tripping out anymore. This is legit science. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And what's really fascinating is what they're finding is that our brains aren't just passively recording reality like a camera. Right. They're actively creating it, constantly predicting what's going to happen next and filling in the gaps based on what they expect to see. Okay, hold on. I'm already starting to feel my brain bend a little. So you're saying our perception of reality, it's more like a prediction than a direct observation. Exactly. It's like yeah. our brains are these expert BSers. Like <laughs> they're taking in these bits of sensory information and then weaving this whole narrative around it. Okay. Think of it like this. You walk into a room, you see a table with half a plate of cookies. Your brain doesn't just register like table mm -hmm. cookies, it instantly starts filling in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Someone was here, they eat some cookies, maybe they'll be back for more. So like my brain's already writing a whole story based on one glance. And directing it. And adding special effects. All on the split second. Yeah. This is what's called predictive coding. It's your brain always working ahead, creating this model of the world based on past experiences and then your current input. Okay, so that makes the whole brain in a vat thing a little less crazy, doesn't it? I mean, if our brains can simulate that much detail... Ah, uh, you're getting it. This is where it gets really, really interesting. Imagine, like, the Matrix, right? Even though it's a simulation, it feels real to the people plugged in because their brains are treating it as such. And our brains are doing a version of that all the time, creating this seamless experience out of all this fragmented information. And this is where I start to wonder, like, how much of my everyday life is just my brain filling in the blanks? Excellent question. And that's something we're going to unpack further. But before we kind of get ahead of ourselves, there's another piece to this whole puzzle. Virtual reality. Think about how real VR can feel, even though you know it's not. Like that immersive experience is your brain taking those limited sensory inputs. Yeah. And you guessed it, predicting, yeah. filling in creating this whole world out of it. See, that's wild. And it's like our brains are hardwired to believe whatever feels the most consistent, even if it's not actually quote unquote real. Exactly. And that right there is a big clue to how powerful our brains are in shaping our reality. It's you wonder, right? If our brains are so good at creating these simulations, these best guesses about the world, what does that actually say about our conscious experience? Is that another layer of the simulation? Whoa, okay, now we're getting really meta. Consciousness as part of the brain simulation, my mind is officially blown, <laughs> but like, if our brains are the puppet masters here, what? does that mean there's no such thing as objective truth? Are we just living in our own little bubbles of perception? The billion dollar question, right? It's something that like, philosophers have been debating for centuries, right? right? Right. The good news is, just because our perceptions are influenced by our brains, it doesn't mean they're completely off base. Okay, good. Because I was starting to worry that my whole life was just a figment of my imagination. So what's the catch? How do we reconcile this idea of a brain-created reality with, like, the actual world out there? Remember, our brains are constantly trying to make sense of the world in a way that helps us survive mm, and, you know, wrong. not walk into walls. <laughs> yeah. Our perceptions, they might be filtered through, you know, our individual brains. Mm but they're still grounded in real world information. It's like our brains are giving us the Cliff's Notes version of reality, like the most useful and efficient version. 
even if it's not always, you know, perfectly accurate. So kind of like how Instagram filters make everyone look amazing, but maybe a little too smooth. Exactly. Our brains are doing their own version of like airbrushing, right? Highlighting the most important details huh. and kind of filtering out the noise. Okay. Imagine like you're walking through, I don't know, like a crowded city street. Your brain isn't processing every single face. Every shop window, every pigeon on the sidewalk. It's focusing on what's relevant to you, mm -hmm. the direction you need to go, mm -hmm. potential hazards, Yeah. maybe that delicious smelling pizza place you like. Okay, that makes sense. Our brains are like, don't sweat the small stuff, just focus on what's important. But what about the stuff that really throws us for a loop, like our emotions? We've all had moments where our feelings totally color our perception of a situation, right? Absolutely. Emotions are like pr prime examples of how our internal states can so dramatically affect our experience. When we're happy, when we're feeling good, the world just seems, I don't know, like brighter, friendlier, full of possibilities. Yeah. But if we're anxious mm. or we're stressed, that same world can suddenly feel threatening or overwhelming. It's like our emotions are literally changing the filter on our camera lens. Yeah. Same scene, totally different picture. Speaking of filters, you know what really drives this home for me? Psychedelic. People who use those substances describe these radically different experiences of reality. Like their brains are suddenly generating a whole new world. It's a great point. Psychedelics are like a key to understanding how much power our brains actually have in constructing our reality. They basically like hack the system, right? They temporarily change how the brain processes information and they really reveal just how flexible and subjective our experience really is. Okay, that's both amazing and kind of terrifying. So our brains are capable of creating these incredibly vivid experiences even without any real external input. What's up with that? What's fascinating here is that it's not just limited to psychedelics. It points to this larger truth about our brains. Okay. They're constantly creating, even when we're not aware of it. It's like our brains are these master storytellers. Uh, uh, weaving together these narratives from our senses, our emotions, our past experiences. And the wildest part is, we're often the last to know how the story is being written. It's like we think we're in control, but our brains are back there like, oh, honey, you have no idea. Exactly. But before you start questioning everything you thought you knew, let's bring it back down to earth for a moment. Okay. We've talked a lot about how our brains construct reality, hmm. but like, how does it all come together? How yeah. do we go from this jumble of sensory information to this cohesive experience? Yeah, it's like, I get that my brain's putting on a show, but what's going on behind the curtain? Think of your brain as this master conductor leading an orchestra. Each of your senses is like an instrument playing its part. Okay. Your vision is this, like soaring violin. Your hearing is this pounding drum. Your sense of touch is this deep cello. I love this. So instead of a cacophony of random sounds, we get a beautiful symphony of perception. Exactly. And just like a conductor might emphasize certain instruments or certain musical themes, your brain can choose to focus on certain sensory inputs, depending on what's most important in that moment. Okay, I'm following you, but can you give me a real world example? How does this symphony of senses play out in our everyday lives? Sure. Imagine you're walking through a forest, right? Okay. Your brain isn't just recognizing like tree. It's the rustle of leaves in the wind hitting your ears, the rough texture of bark under your fingers, maybe even like the memory of building a tree house as a kid. All the sensations and memories are woven together to create that really rich, multi-layered experience. Wow, that's actually really beautiful when you think about it like that. Our brains are composing entire symphonies out of these everyday moments. But like any good orchestra, I'm guessing our brains can also hit a few wrong notes sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Even the most talented conductor can be tricked by a well-played illusion. Remember those two lines we talked about earlier? The ones that look like different lengths because of the arrows on the ends? Yeah, the Miller Liar illusion, right? Total mind bender. That illusion is a perfect example of how our brain's tendency to like fill in the blanks and make assumptions yeah. can sometimes lead to us perceiving things that aren't entirely accurate. Our brains are so busy trying to create this coherent story that they occasionally miss a beat. So it's not so much that our brains are lying to us, mm -hmm but they're just really good at telling themselves a good story. Precisely. Yeah. And it's not just about, you know, visual illusions. Our expectations can shape our perceptions in all sorts of ways. It's giving, seeing what we want to see, but like on a whole other level. Exactly. Think about that classic optical illusion. 
that can be seen as either a duck or a rabbit. Oh, yeah, I love that one. Nice. It all depends on how you look at it. Right. If you're like primed with the idea of Easter, for example, mm -hmm. you're more likely to see a rabbit. But if you're thinking about like a pond, mm -hmm. you'll probably see a duck. Same image, different perception based on what's already in your mind. So our brains are like master storytellers, always looking for patterns and meaning, even if it means like bending the facts a bit. Exactly. And that brings us to a truly fascinating phenomenon, hallucinations. It's in those moments that the line between our internal simulations and external reality mm. gets really blurry. Hallucinations, huh? Yeah. Okay, now we're getting into some seriously trippy territory. So we're talking about like seeing things that aren't really there. Exactly. Hallucinations are prime examples of our brains generating their own realities completely independent of any external input. It's like the projector in our mind has just decided to put on its own show. And these hallucinations feel totally real to the person experiencing them, even though there's nothing actually there. That's the thing they do. It really highlights the fact that our brains are capable of creating such convincing experiences even when they're not based on any external reality. And you know, this reminds me of something everyone can relate to. Vivid dreams. Oh man, tell me about it. I had this crazy dream last night where I was being chased by a giant talking squirrel. Yeah. Don't even ask. See. Our brains are capable of creating these incredibly realistic and immersive worlds even when we're asleep. Dreams are a fascinating window into the creative power of our minds. They show us that our brains are constantly creating, even when we're not consciously aware of it. It's like our brains are working overtime, 24-7, churning out these blockbuster movies in our heads. But why? Why go through all that trouble to create these simulations, whether we're awake asleep or even hallucinating? So some neuroscientists believe that this constant simulation is actually essential to our survival. Think about it. The world is a chaotic and unpredictable place by creating models and predictions. Our brains can navigate this uncertainty more effectively, helping us anticipate danger, make decisions, and hopefully avoid becoming some predator's lunch. So our simulated realities aren't just some weird quirk of evolution, they're actually giving us an evolutionary edge. Yeah. That's kind of amazing, but it also begs the question, if our perceptions are so malleable, if our realities are so subjective, what does that mean for our understanding of truth? Is there even such a thing? Ah, uh, now you're hitting on one of the biggest questions in philosophy, and one of the key thinkers on this topic was Immanuel Kant. He argued that we can never truly know the thing in itself, the world as it exists, completely independent of our minds. Okay, gotta be honest. Philosophy isn't exactly my forte. Can you break that down for me? Sure, imagine trying to film reality with a perfect camera. Kant would say that even then what you're seeing is still just your interpretation of the footage filtered through your senses and your brain's way of making sense of it. It's not necessarily the absolute truth of what's happening. Wow, okay, so we're always seeing reality through our own personal lens, our own brain's custom filter. It's enough to make you feel like you're going down the rabbit hole. It is a lot to take in, isn't it? But instead of getting overwhelmed, think of it this way. Understanding that our brains are constructing our reality can actually be incredibly empowering. Empowering? How so? Yeah. I'm all for feeling empowered, especially after that mind-bending conversation about reality being subjective. Well, it means that we're not just passive passengers along for the ride. We have the ability to influence our perceptions, to shape our experience of reality to some degree. Wait, seriously, so it's not all predetermined. We have some say in the matter. Absolutely. Remember how we talked about emotions, expectations, and beliefs influencing our perceptions? Well, that means we can actively work on cultivating more positive and helpful mental states. So if I'm feeling stressed and the world seems like a chaotic mess, I'm not just stuck with that perception. Exactly. There are things you can do, like practicing mindfulness, which has been shown to help people become more aware of their thoughts and emotions, allowing them to observe those thoughts and feelings without judgment. So instead of being ruled by our thoughts and emotions, we can learn to create a little space from them. To see them as just thoughts, not necessarily facts. Precisely. And that shifting perspective can be incredibly powerful. It allows us to choose how we want to engage with the world rather than constantly reacting to our own internal dramas. Wow, this has been a wild ride. We started with, is reality just a projection? and ended up with, we can actually reshape our realities. Who knew brains could be so cool? It's truly amazing what our brains are capable of, right? And the more we learn about how they work, the more we realize just how much potential we have to shape our own experiences. So to all our listeners out there, the next time you look at the night sky or listen to a piece of music or even just take a bite of your favorite food, 
Take a moment to appreciate the incredible symphony of perception happening in your own head. It's a performance unlike any other, and you have a front row seat. And as you go about your day, remember that while your brain might be the director of your reality, you get to choose how you experience the show.